four. And make sure it is actually, do you see any special little marks on your screen that say it's recording yet? I see that we are recording. Okay. Right, and you have to check uh, continue to get rid of that box. Well, that's each individual has to do that. It's an agreement that you have to make. Not, I can't do that for you. Okay, Kathy, I'll let you put your screen up then. Okay, can you see me all right? Perfect. All right. So hello and welcome. I'm Kathy Dixon. I am a co-owner and physical therapist at Action Potential Physical Therapy. Um, I'm here to present on Zoom in increasing home office productivity. Um, we thought this was a, the Speakers Bureau from SCORE and I kind of came up with this idea because, um, you know, back in quarantine, everybody was at home where this was all eminent and important. Um, but now we're starting to notice that a lot of us, this work from home or home office is kind of lasting longer than we expected and has the potential to go on further in the future. Um, so getting some tips and advice on how to, you know, create a good home office and strategies for making yourself efficient and productive is kind of what we wanted to focus on today. So um, I'm gonna introduce myself just a little bit further, you know, what qualifies me to sit up here and speak. And then we're gonna get into identifying some of the challenges that are associated with working from home. Uh, I'm gonna move into highlighting some of the common home office injuries and their causes then further define ergonomics and musculoskeletal injuries. So those are the buzzwords around work, workplace office setup. Uh, we're gonna review workstation setup. And then we're gonna talk about some um, ways to promote workday rest and stretch techniques and how to prevent pain and injury. And then we're gonna end with educating on the benefits of exercise and how to implement them in the home. Um, so that was kind of brought up as a topic. That I might think Kathy just froze. Kathy, can you hear us? I can hear you. If I, can you see my screen? Yes, yes. No. Can you hear me now? Yes. Perfect. Okay. So a little bit more about me. Um, I'm co-owner of Action Potential with Kristen Wilson. Funny enough, we have a pretty long history with SCORE. We utilized SCORE's How to Start a Business Workshop um, about nine years ago when we wrote our business plan. And then about five years into business, we were lucky enough to be a SCORE Small Business Award recipient. Um, we are a one-on-one -on -one physical therapy clinic. We have an office in Glen Mills, which is our, our nine-year office. And then in 2020, right before the pandemic hit, we opened our second location in Kennett Square. Um, Kristen and I also have additional on-site industrial and office training that we pursued, um, gosh, I wanna say like seven years ago, um, which qualifies us to go into an actual workplace setting, whether it's an office um, or an industry related warehouse, where we can kind of evaluate someone's job duties, um, their workplace setup and implement strategies to prevent injury and promote efficiency. Um, our mission as a company is that everyone has a higher potential and together we can reach yours. So the first thing I wanted to do to start this off is do a poll. Um, I just wanted to see how many hours a day are people actually working from home. Um, so I'm going to post that poll now and it's not what you used to do or what you anticipate you're going to do in the future. It's kind of what are you doing right now. So I have that poll up. Kathy, I can't see it on my screen yet. Uh, you might have to click launch poll. See, and we practiced this to make sure it worked. If not, I can try it from my end here. All right, I'm relaunching it. Does that it's work? There we go. Now, can everyone see it? Mm-hmm. So 
So we don't have a lot of people on the live webinar, so it's going to skew our results a little bit. But I will say that the heavy end is going to be six hours or more working from home. So that's a that's a basically your entire work day. Um, I know me myself, I'll put in a full day's work in the office and then I'll go home and put another four hours in at home in addition. So um, the life of a business owner. Mm -hmm. So let's end the poll here. I can share the results. Great, so everybody can kind of get a gist mm -hmm. where we were. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Thank you. Okay, so moving on. So what are some of the challenges of working from home? Um, so first and foremost is a poor workstation setup or lack of a healthy workspace. Um, the other is time management. So sometimes in the office, um, the work environment structures our day for us. So at home, sometimes we have a hard time staying focused and managing our time. We definitely do not take regular rest breaks when working from home. Um, whereas maybe in the office, we might more often. Um, there is the inability to turn off at the end of the day, which kind of makes it hard for us to separate our work from our personal time. Or we start to incorporate our personal time, such as laundry or dinner prep into our work day. Um, so the days just kind of blend together. Um, it's a little bit more difficult to collaborate with your team. Um, I know for ourselves, um, you know, we work in an environment that's a very social interactive environment in a PT clinic. And when we were home during that quarantine period, or even now when working from home, um, you have to make the time and schedule appointments to collaborate with your team. So it's not as much on the fly like it used to be. Um, and that kind of feeds into the lack of social interaction as well. So, you know, if you're home alone and you're working from home, um, you may or may not get video Zooms for your meetings. You may just get audios. Uh, so sometimes we're lacking that social interaction that as human beings, we thrive on. Um, and then the never changing out of your pajamas um, scenario. And, you know, every once in a while, it's fun to have a day where you're at home and you stay in your pajamas all day. However, um, something goes to say when you get up in the morning and you get dressed and you put your best face forward, um, it can help make you be more productive and more efficient throughout your day. So what are some of the common home office injuries and what might cause them? Um, so, you know, we talk a lot about back strain um, in like a, a factory environment. It's, it's due to lifting, right? Um, but even at home lifting, so moving furniture around to create the, the best prepped Zoom background, um, or maybe like carrying your office supplies from the office back to your home. Um, but specifically prolonged sitting is a problem we're gonna see from the home office environment that's gonna cause back strain. And then neck pain, neck pain um, mostly due to computer use and bad posture at your desk. However, it can also be due to reaching. So we think about reaching, uh, um, you know, reaching overhead, but when you're working from your desk, you know, you have your immediate workspace right in front of you, but if you don't have it set up correctly, you're reaching out to the side, maybe reaching behind you, and kind of that repetitive or overreaching out of your immediate workspace can cause neck strain. Um, and then carpal tunnel syndrome. So again, it's very much related to keyboard use, ab, bad posture, um, or again, just repetitive movement. So those overuse things that we do where we're constantly going to the same place or constantly staying in the same position with our hands. So then just to define some of the buzzwords that surround this topic, we have ergonomics, which by definition is the study of fitting the workplace conditions and job demands to the capabilities of the working person. And what that means is I'm me, this is me, this is my body stature, this is how my posture um, and my work environment may fit me, but not someone else. So it's the idea of this is how I am and how can I set up my environment to not put additional external stresses and strains on my body, okay? So we can't really modify ourselves that much, but we can put some thought into modifying our surrounding environment to make the best setup. And then we talk about musculoskeletal disorders or MSDs, and basically they're injuries that affect 
your body. So it can be muscles, nerves, blood vessels, ligaments, tendons. And a lot of times these injuries occur because of poor positioning or posture um, or repeated use in, a, in an abnormal position to our body. So something that's not comfortable and normal. Um, and the crazy thing about both of these is um, the injuries can all be prevented with just a little bit of thought into your ergonomic setup. So tips for working successfully at home. So this is gonna be the meat and potatoes of the presentation. This is where we'll get into the information details, um, but we're gonna talk about how to create an ergonomic workstation um, in order to decrease pain and discomfort. Then we're gonna talk about what are the rest breaks that I can incorporate. So what are the regular rest and stretch breaks that I can use to prevent injury? And then we kind of put a section in on routine exercise. So I kind of call exercise the elixir of life. Um, however you want to, you know, think about exercise in the context of your lifestyle, but any type of exercise is going to help prevent injury and it's going to improve mood and focus. So if you remember some of those challenges I talked about in the first couple of slides, um, you know, a way we can put a start and stop to our day or a way that we can get better sleep at night. Um, is to kind of exercise because it helps kind of define different parts of our day and it helps um, increase our circulation and, and improve our mood and focus. So workstation setup. Um, this is funny. This is my husband and this is his makeshift home workstation. <laughs> Um, so he did not work at home prior to the pandemic and during the pandemic he started working from home and now it's pretty indefinite he might be there for a long time. Um, so this is the final version of what we created. Uh, we started out with a much different version. Um, so just to highlight some points of your home office setup is you want to kind of go with the rule of 90 degree angles. So if you look, his elbows are at about 90 degrees, his hips are at a 90 degree angle, his knees are at a 90 degree angle. And what that does is it allows his feet to rest on the floor. It allows his pelvis to support his spine in a neutral position above his body. Okay, so we want neutral 90 degree angles. Um, the monitor you're gonna notice is just below the uh, level of his eyes or at eye level. Um, that makes it so that we don't get any excessive bending or neck strain. His arms are supported and his feet are flat. Um, so the arms supported, some people will talk about armrests on your desk chair. Um, whereas Ryan here, he's just kind of more supporting his for end of his forearms and his wrists on the table. Um, the problem you run into with armrests on your chair is that sometimes it limits you from scooting underneath your desk so that you can maintain those 90 degree angles that we talked about first. So his chair actually had armrests that we removed so that he could scoot under his desk better. Um, and then talking about your chair, you wanna have low and mid back contact. So not everybody's going to have a desk chair at home. They may be using a dining room chair. Um, what I would say is if this is going to be a long-term thing for you, you may want to invest in an office chair. Um, however, once you have your posture set, you want to make sure that your chair holds you in that position. So nobody can sit with erect posture all day long without any support. So the idea here is that we're getting some contact from the chair in our low back or our middle back. So once you get yourself set in the 90 degree angles, feet on the floor, monitor at the right height, if you can't get support from the back of your chair, that's when you start to add like a pillow or a towel roll or something to kind of create that contact. Um, and then the third is you just want to make sure that you're changing positions frequently. So whether that's you do a task at your computer and then you get up and do a task that's not involving sitting at your computer or um, in the case of Ryan, we went out and purchased a standing desk for him. So you'll see his desk is his uh, monitor is supported on a platform. He can actually pull that up and start working in a standing position for a period of time. And then again, to change position, he can push it down and sit back down to work. Any questions before I move on from that slide? Because that's a pretty detailed slide. I'll take um, chat box or hand raises if anybody has one and Maria will help me kind of monitor. If not, I'll take lots of questions at the end if anybody has any. 
So he's saying, all right, Kathy, how do I make my desk station look like that? So, you know, I always hesitate to tell people to go out and spend money. So there's crafty alternatives. And then there's the, you know, I can buy off of Amazon alternatives. But here's some different options I just wanted to introduce to everybody. Um, so an adjustable height standing desk like my husband has can run about um, $100. I know he got his from Costco. The one I have pictured here with the yellow monitors. Um, that was straight off of Amazon. Um, so the nice thing here is it goes up and down. Um, it also acts, so if I go back a slide, um, so if Ryan's monitor was sitting on his desk, his monitor would be significantly lower than his eye level. So you have to sometimes bring the monitor up if your monitor doesn't adjust up and down. So the standing desk can also serve that purpose. If you don't want the option of a standing desk or you want a cheaper option, you can use down here the monitor stand or platform. Um, so that runs about $12 to $40 on Amazon. Um, to be honest with you, our initial solution for his desk was we took two by fours from the garage and made like a little wooden block stand and put his monitors on that. Um, in our office here, we have Carol's monitor on old phone books. So you can get creative. Um, you don't have to spend the money. The other thing is a laptop stand. So over here in the corner, um, the thing with laptops is we really don't have adjustability of our monitor and our keyboard. So if you buy a laptop stand, you can make that monitor at the correct height when you're sitting for long periods of time. However, I usually do recommend getting a Bluetooth keyboard so your arms aren't in this like outstretched position typing on that, that uh, pedestal there. Um, you're more in that relaxed 90 degree angle. Um, I talked about lumbar supports or like a towel roll or a pillow behind your back. So this is the most common one you're gonna see on the internet. Um, when we talk about lumbar supports, they're not taking up the space in the small of your back. They're more or less helping hold your pelvis in that neutral position so you don't roll back onto your tailbone. Um, or it's just to take up space from the back of the chair to your back so that you're sitting supported during your work day. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, foot rest for under your desk. If you get yourself in the perfect position and then your feet don't touch the floor, um, you don't want to scooch forward and lose that position so your feet are flat. So you can either put a small step stool underneath your feet, or these are ones that, again, were just on Amazon for a, a couple of dollars. Um, and something I feel very strongly about is this document holder. Um, so if you're doing a lot of transcribing from paper to computer and paper to computer, um, that can become a repetitive use injury and it can create strain on your neck and your back. Um, so the document holder allows it so that your head is just getting a normal natural head turn while you're going from paper to computer. So these are some just basic strategies that really help kind of modify your workplace setup. Um, to promote that healthy posture that we're looking for. And again, if you're not constantly focusing on the aches and pains, then it can help you be more efficient and productive in your work day. Hi, Kathy, it's Maria. We do have a couple of questions. Um, one is from Monica. Monica, if you'd like to ask it yourself, you can take yourself off mute or I'll be happy to read your question. Um, okay, Monica's uh, question was, she was going to ask if you have recommendations on specific pillows for back support um, in, when you're sitting in a dining room chair as opposed to an office chair. A dining room chair? Um, yes, again, so this, um, the one that I have pictured here would work just as well. Um, the other thing I will tell people to do, I don't know if I have any towels in here. it pays to be at work. So let's say I have your standard dish towel, okay? It's not super thick. Um, if there's not a lot of room, you just need something small to take up the space in your back, you can fold the dish towel like this, or you could take even a bath towel if you need something a little thicker and fold it like this. And then you can just kind of nestle that down, right, not in the small of my back, but right to the top of my pelvis. And what that does is it helps support me from rolling into that sacral sit position or that tailbone position. So this, my chair would be behind me supporting that pillow and then the pillow supporting my back. Um, they sell things on Amazon or on the internet called a lumbo support roll. So it's just almost like a, a firmer foam roll that you can use. Um, the same idea as a rolled up towel. 
Um, or this one here was from Amazon as well. Um, that's just a lumbar, lumbar support pillow. Um, Kathy, one more question, and maybe you'll get to this in a minute so we can pause it if, if you're coming to it. Um, it was about um, tips to prevent eye strain. Oh, we're going to get there. Okay. Ahead of the game. <laughs> good. Thanks. Perfect. Any more or we're good? Uh, right now, that's all we see in the box so far. Okay. All right, so rest and stretch tips. So here's the other, um, you know, the, the advice. Um, so the first one on the docket here is you want to rest your eyes every 20 minutes. Um, again, I'm a realist in this world and not every 20 minutes are you gonna be able to do the things I recommend. But if every 20 minutes you could look away from your monitor, focus on an object that's about 25 feet away um, for one to two minutes, that's a great way to reduce eye strain. Um, I always say you can make it some type of motivational picture or motivational quote, um, which can kind of bring a smile to your day. But um, you definitely want to look away from your computer. Um, you don't want your computer set up right in front of a window. Sometimes the glare directly in front of you can make it hard for your eyes to adjust to the light. Um, and the other thing that's out there that, I mean, again, you can buy right off of Amazon are the blue light filtering glasses. So you can have them built into a prescription or you can just, I have a pair that have no prescription in them, but when I'm gonna sit down for a long period of time at my computer, um, I'll put on my blue light filtering glasses and they have a clear lens, but what they do is they reduce the blue light um, that comes to my eyes and it helps reduce the strain of your eyes. So that's a tip for your eyes. Um, another tip is about every 25 minutes, you should really try to walk or stand up um, or just walk around the house. So we're probably, if I had to look at the clock here, we're probably about 25 minutes into it. So why doesn't everybody just stand up for a second? And then we can just kind of do things like um, you can go up and down on your toes. You can march in place. And it doesn't have to be for a long period of time. It could be 30 seconds to a minute. You could stretch your arms overhead, okay? Or you can take a quick walk around your house if you're doing independent work. But even if you're on a Zoom conference or a video call, um, you know, you can either video out your screen for a second and just kind of stand up and move around. Um, but it really helps kind of improve the circulation in your body. It helps kind of refocus your head. Um, so again, I'm a realist. You, can, you can't realistically always stop every 25 minutes, but if you can, it's a great way to kind of help you stop and refocus and reposition in your chair and give your eyes a rest break. Um, and then the third one is varying your tasks. So I already kind of touched base on this. Um, you know, you can be sitting, you can be standing at your desk, you can work on some computer work for a while. Um, and then maybe even if you're still sitting, but you can go to some design work or creativity work. So just kind of changing the workflow of, of what you're working on can help you stay focused. Um, but it also, again, can help your position. So you're just not sitting in the same place doing the same repeated activity. This next slide here is more a take home for you. These are just some very basic stretches that you can do throughout your workday, whether it's at that 25 minute break or not. Um, but there's a neck stretch where you just kind of bend and provide a little overpressure from your hand, either side to side. Great one for the wrist and carpal tunnel is just to kind of get a stretch here where I'm just kind of stretching my hand and fingers back. So I'm just kind of stretching this part of my arm and wrist. Um, you'll see the two at the bottom are standing. So you can do little squats, but if you put your hands behind your head when you do your squat and you stick your tush out back behind you, you can really kind of open your chest and stretch your hips at the same time. And then the chest and shoulder stretch is one of my favorites. You can just go to your door jam, hands on either side of the door jam, take a step and you just get to stretch and kind of open up that chest area. You can think of having a nice long neck and it's a great way to just kind of get a stretch in just to change that static positioning that you're in all day. Okay. So we're going to move into the exercise piece. So did anybody have any other questions on the workplace setup um, or any of the rest and stretch break techniques? If so, not, we don't have anything else in the box, Kathy, but, um, and maybe you will come to this. So um, check me if you're getting there. How about about emotional stress? Like, 
how do you deal with frustration or it was just a really bad call with a customer, you know, things that maybe aren't exactly physical. Physical. Um, so I think the next portion of the webinar is going to be helpful because again, I think exercise is the elixir of life. Um, so exercise is really the thing that is going to help change mood, anxiety. Um, so, you know, if you're heated and fumed or upset, um, sometimes the best thing to do is stop and walk away. Um, and by walking away, now you can do any kind of exercise, whether it's a walk around your house, a walk around your block, one of those stretching techniques that I just kind of showed you. Um, and it just kind of helps reset your mind and your mood, um, as well as promoting a, a sense of physical well being. Um, the other thing, too, I mean, I can't speak on the end of like psychology or anything like that, but um, journaling is helpful for a lot of people. Um, so kind of putting your thoughts on paper can then help you maybe reorganize them into a productive conversation instead of an, a, an upset reactive conversation. Um, but specifically working from home, I think the best thing to do is to just stop and walk away for a minute and work on this other piece, which is exercise. And exercise doesn't have to mean sweat dripping exercise clothes. It can be as simple as going for a walk. It can be as simple as um, doing some stretches. Does that help, Maria? Sure does. All right, so I'm going to launch this next poll. Um, and again, I'm not defining exercise here. So do you exercise at home? I should have put another one on here that said, yes, but I wish I did more. <laughs> so that would be my category. Got eight out of nine. So I wonder if they consider me as the ninth. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and end the poll here and then share the results. So most people do some form of exercise at home. And it would be interesting on how many people exercised at home previous to the pandemic versus exercising in a gym type setting. Um, so I know I was the latter, I exercised in a gym type setting and now I'm struggling to figure out how to exercise at home and to do it regularly. So um, what this tells me is that exercising at home is on the forefront of most people's minds, which I think is good. Um, because exercise has more value than, you know, weight loss and, and looking good in your clothes. It really does help mood, anxiety, um, and it helps you get a good night's sleep. It can kind of help reset your sleep rhythm. Um, so I'm going to specifically talk about strength training, stretching, and aerobic activity. So the why behind strength training, why is it important? So it's gonna improve the structure of the support. Um, I'm sorry, it's gonna improve the structure surrounding the bones and joints of your body. So it's improving that postural support. So in our workplace setup, we talked about how important it is to have good posture while well, strength training can help you improve your posture inherent to your body. Um, when you do strength training, you wanna emphasize your exercise in standing positions. Okay, so a lot of times in the clinic, I might have somebody start in a lying position so that they can focus in on different muscle groups. But the strength training really begins when we put that into a standing full body movement with or without weights. Um, you wanna focus on the muscles of the core. So that's your abdominal area, your hips, specifically your side hips and your back butt or your glute and your shoulder blade muscles. Cause the shoulder blade muscles are kind of what pulls your shoulders back and opens your chest and helps your spine stay tall. Um, good examples of these exercises are squats, um, rows. So that's kind of where you're kind of just going and pulling the shoulder blades back. So if you don't have exercise equipment, you could do shoulder blade squeezes and you know, moving your shoulders in towards your spine and step ups. So most people have a step, if not a full flight of stairs in their house. Um, if you're safe doing steps, this is a great way to strengthen the hip and core. Um, the one thing I will say with strength training is let symptoms be your guide. 
Okay. So if you're not doing regular fitness, you want to make sure that you ease your way in. So not using weights, just using your body weight first. And then in the next day, if you feel good, then the next time, maybe you increase the weight or increase the repetitions. Um, so the best thing for strength training is doing it in standing in some type of dynamic functional movement. So stretching, stretching is equally as important as strength training. So the strength improves, you know, the structures around the joints and then stretching maintains healthy joints. So it's going to keep the muscles loose to help prevent injury. You know, it's going to allow you to have the range of motion to move in all the directions that you can without getting pinching or straining. Um, when people do stretching, I tell people don't bounce. Okay. You want to actually go into the stretch and you want to hold for at least 10 seconds, if not up to a whole minute, depending on the stretch that you're doing. I always talk to people about, you know, when you stretch, you want to take up the tension and hold. You don't want to crank to the end range as fast as you can. All right. Um, stretching should be pain-free. Sometimes you might feel a little discomfort or stretch pulling and that's okay, but it really should be pain free. If you're having pain with stretching, you should probably, um, you know, seek some type of consultation for that. Um, examples of just easy stretches you can implement in the home is the runner's lunge. So that's where you kind of stand next to the wall and go into a split position and just lunge forward to stretch your back calf. Um, the cat camel is what's pictured here. So this is spine mobility. You know, if you have a hard time getting down on your knees, you can do it at your desk. You can put your hands on your desk and you can move your spine into that angry cat position and then arch into that camel hump position. Um, so you can do it sitting as well as kneeling. Um, and then the pec stretch in the door jam. So that's where you put your hands on either side of the doorway and kind of lean forward into the stretch. Um, so all of those are great ones that you can very easily implement at home. And then aerobic activity. So I think aerobic activity is the one that really addresses kind of the sleep mood and energy piece of all of this, um, because aerobic activity can help regulate and decrease our blood pressure. It can reduce anxiety. It increases circulation and oxygenation to our blood. Um, so, you know, when you sit for a long period of time, you feel stiff. That's because you're not getting a lot of circulation through those muscles. You're not keeping them warm or the joints lubricated. Um, so how do we do aerobic activity, especially if it's not something we do often? Um, what I always say is you want to just monitor your rate of perceived exertion. So on the side here, I have this RPE scale. Back in the day, we used to do uh, max heart rate, so 220 minus your age and some other things for an equation. Um, but then you have to have a heart rate monitor and it, it's kind of a little bit more difficult to, to gauge so people just weren't using it. So they came up with this scale and it's based off of your ability to talk or hold a conversation can help gauge your intensity level. So if you look here, what we normally will recommend for people is to work in the five to eight category. So the moderate activity to the very hard activity. So if you're in the moderate, you know, you feel like you can exercise for long periods of time. So this is something I could keep up for an hour or two. Um, and I'm able to hold a conversation with somebody while I'm doing it. Um, so sometimes I could be walking around the neighborhood while I have my earbud in on an audio work call. Um, the other thing would be, um, you know, moving to the nine, the eight and nine is going to be very hard activity. So that's where it's difficult to maintain the intensity and hard to speak more than a, a word or two. So when you're huffing and puffing, um, you kind of know you're more in that harder level of intensity. And then what we recommend to people is, you know, if you're used to fitness and you're doing it to improve your fitness, you want to work at a comfortable level or one just above where you're comfortable. If you're new to fitness, you want to start out in this moderate activity level and kind of build up your stamina and endurance. And overall, we recommend adults um, exercise about 150 minutes a week, um, which just calculates to about 20 minutes, seven days a week. So you can do it all in one lump sum and get your exercise in. Um, but you know, most of us here are working six to eight hours a day. If we kind of got up every 25 minutes and did you know, five to 10 minutes, I mean, we would exceed that 20 minutes daily easy. Um, just some other examples of what are aerobic activities. I mean, walking is the easiest one, but there's also biking if you have access to a bike. 
Um, you know, the weather's getting nice out, they're swimming. Um, and then there's all these high intensity interval training workouts that have on demand videos these days. Um, even something as simple as like yoga and stretching um, can also be like a light exertional activity. And then just kind of ideas. I, I talked a little bit on how to make exercise successful at home. Um, I think it's more challenging to stay in a routine with exercising at home instead of attending your class at the gym on a regular basis. Um, but first and foremost, at home, you wanna create a safe environment. You don't wanna be doing some type of move and fall and smack your head on the coffee table. Um, so just make sure you have a nice area to work in. Um, get creative with your equipment. So the next slide, I'm gonna show you some things that you can purchase. But um, during quarantine, when we were doing telehealth virtual visits, we had to get very creative with equipment because you can't find any to buy. Um, so patients helped me get creative. And one is like um, half empty paint cans can work kind of like a kettlebell for lifting or like a dumbbell on either side of your hand for like weighted squats. Um, you know, a soup can is a one pound weight. It's better than nothing. Um, so just kind of thinking about what you have in your home to kind of create a challenge. A laundry basket with some books in it sometimes can be something that's weighted. Um, specifically for exercising in the home, you want to make time. You want to plan it into your day. So we hear this all the time. Plan your mental time. Plan your me time. Plan your family time. We also have to plan your exercise time. So whether that's making a mental note that I'm going to eat lunch today and then after that I'm going to take my exercise time or if it's actually writing your schedule for the day and just kind of scheduling in a little slot for exercise. Um, just kind of you want to make sure that you stay limber with a warm up or cool down, um, depending on your intensity level, this is more important. So it could be something as simple as standing and marching in place, or a simple, you know, walk around the, the house or up and down the driveway before you start a more intense type workout. Um, you want to stay hydrated. The easiest way to do this is to just have your water by you. So have your water at your desk, have your water bottle next to you while you're exercising. You want to make sure you're monitoring your exertion on that scale I showed you on the last slide. Um, you don't want to overdo it. And to be honest, you also don't want to underdo it. So you want to give yourself a, a little bit of a challenge. And then know when to ask for help. I'll talk about this at the end a little bit, but there is help out there in multiple formats now. So it, this is a good place to kind of implement a, a new change. And when you don't know what to do, ask for help and have fun. Create a fun challenge with a friend. We have the Apple Watches now. So even from a distance, you can compete with your friends. And when they complete a workout, you can encourage them. Um, you can have a weekly Zoom check-in with your exercise friends and everybody can throw around ideas on uh, what's working for them, what's not working for them. Um, so it really helps to kind of have a whole army behind you. So here's just some exercise ideas. Vic actually had asked me, he's like, what, what's out there? <laughs> what's out there that we can you know, take advantage of? Um, so again, I always hate to throw out things that cost money. So be creative in what you have in your home. But if this is a commitment that you truly you know, are, are wanting to make and you wanna invest some money in, here's some different options. Um, so first and foremost, there are lots of free recordings or paid subscriptions of on-demand workouts. So Facebook has tons of free workouts. YouTube has tons of free workouts. Um, people even have like YouTube channels where they're doing a new one each day. Um, during quarantine, we did Facebook twice a day with exercises and now they're recorded and posted on our website for easy access. Um, you can subscribe to things like, you know, Comcast Xfinity has on-demand workouts. There's Beachbody, Peloton, Les Mills. So, I mean, the sky's the limit on whatever type of guided workout you're looking for. Um, Equipment-wise, I think the easiest and most cost-effective is down here, the resistance bands in the corner. So the nice thing is you anchor them by kind of like closing the strap and the door jam. And it's a nice way to get some resistance um, without having heavy bulky weights lying around. Um, and it's a great way to incorporate your upper body and lower body into fitness. Um, I do like these adjustable dumbbells right here. So, you know, I'm a physical therapist. You'd think I'd have equipment at my house. I don't. So when we closed the office for a couple of weeks, I took equipment to my house. 
but then we opened. So I had to bring it back. And I literally have a set of five pound dumbbells. That's it. So um, you can't buy single set dumbbells, I feel like anywhere, or at least for an affordable price. So there's these, which are awesome because they're adjustable. So they can go from different weights. So maybe they have multi-purpose for different family members. The problem is, is that they're costly. Um, but it's a great alternative. Same thing with the adjustable kettlebell. Um, so if kettlebell workouts, um, you know, they make for great lifting and lift strengthening. Again, they have adjustable ones. Um, I actually, the thing I invested in was the body pump bar. Um, you know, body pump is like a, a class you have at the gym. The reason I went with this one is because the weights on the end actually click off and they can be used as dumbbells. So for me, it was kind of like a multi-purpose. I had the dumbbells I was so in dire in need of, but then I could also click them in to increase the weight. So I only needed one exercise with a heavy weight. Um, so that one worked for me. Um, you may wanna invest in something like a yoga mat. Again, Amazon or even um, like HomeSense or uh, home goods, Marshalls have them pretty cheap. Um, or even if you go to a Home Depot type store, they have those padded floor squares. I think you can get a pack of four for $8. And you know, in your garage, you can create a little exercise corner with a nice soft padded floor um, or in your basement. Um, you can purchase things like exercise steps, stationary bikes, treadmills. Again, it's how much are you willing to invest? Um, but there's tons of options out there. Um, I say now that it's getting nice out, go outside and get some fresh air and some sunshine. Um, but in the winter, I think it was a little tough for some people to get out with the weather. Um, and then my only other piece of advice is, you know, I had a good, I had a lot of luck looking for things on Facebook Marketplace and Craigslist. So looking for used items, there's even free swap, um, like online things that are out there. I'm not well versed in all of them. Um, but you can find some used equipment that's in pretty good condition for about half the price of what you can buy it new. So it's always good to take a look at those. Kathy, it's Maria. We have a couple of really good ideas in the chat box. Oh, great. <laughs> one, one is save your milk jugs and fill them with water. They already have a handle. <laughs> that, and you can weigh them on a scale if you have a scale at home. That's a fantastic yeah. idea. Right. And th thank you, Monica. And also the library has many workout DVDs also. So if you uh, have a free membership, that's another option. And Five Below is another retailer mentioned as having inexpensive mats and other um, uh, equipment to consider. So Yeah, F Five Below is actually great. That was my first go-to for my dumbbells and my kettlebell and all that. The problem is, is that um, they don't have things that have higher weights, but they do have bands and mats. So that was a great suggestion. Thank mm -hmm. you guys. Mm -hmm. I like the milk jug idea the best. That's better than the paint cans. <laughs> Um, okay, so then it just brings me when to ask for help. Um, you know, a lot of us were kind of in a spot and we were like, I got to do something, I got to do something. And now it's like, I really need to get in the routine of doing something. Um, you should always ask for help if you have pain. So if you have pain sitting at your desk, or if you have pain with attempts at exercise, or you have pain with just everyday activities, you really need to be, um, pain is not normal. So that means that there's usually something that can help mediate or help address that pain. So whether it's you know calling your physician, calling a physical therapist, calling a personal trainer, and you know having them teach you exercises um, with good body mechanics, all of those things are options out there. They have in-person and they have virtual um, ways of delivering that, that care right now. So if you have pain, definitely seek it out. Um, if you're unsure what to do, all right, you've never been a really big exerciser or you don't know how to exercise outside of a guided gym setting, um, that's a great time also to reach out to these practitioners for help. And a lot of times people have a free, like short virtual screening so you can figure out if it's the right fit for you to pursue or not. Um, specifically, if you're starting exercise and you have a complex medical history, you want to make sure you get clearance from your physician um, or you want to make sure that you're moving the right way so that you don't injure yourself. Um, and then frankly, more than ever, help is available to us in multiple media formats. So when in doubt, feel free to reach out and ask questions. If you have any questions on maybe who to contact or what, where to go, um, you can always feel free to reach out to me and I can kind of help guide you in the right direction. Um, so that brings me to the end. 
Um, basically, I just wanted to highlight that working from home affects the body both physically and emotionally. Um, and the effects of working from home can be improved with physical activity. So here again, I said exercise is the elixir of life, right? It helps us not have injury sitting or standing at our desk, but it also helps to improve our mood, decrease our anxiety, um, and help us get in a better sleep, sleep wake kind of rest cycle. Um, and then finally, if pain or fear is limiting your ability to change your workstation or implement exercise, seek professional guidance because it's there. So that brings me to the end. I have my contact email here. If anybody had any follow-up questions they wanted to ask after the fact, please feel free. Um, and then we'll just kind of open it up to any additional questions uh, people might have. So Kathy, we do have one in the box and I just saved it till now because it's about the desk setup, which what you talked about earlier on. And yeah. uh, the question is about, you know, what lighting tips, now you mentioned the window situation, but what kind of lighting do you recommend for a desk setup? And are there any colors that are better on your eyes in terms of the colors around your desk um, uh, situation? Any colors that are harsh on your eyes? Any ideas on that? Um, so colors, I think, is the, the, the least amount of contrast between your screen color and the wall behind you is probably better. So, and the way I kind of talk about this is imagine staring at a checkerboard, right? Where it's black and white, black and white. And imagine staring at a checkerboard and moving your head. It almost makes you nauseous and dizzy. Like you're looking out the side window of your car and things are passing by you. So if you can kind of, I would say, create a more neutral tone behind your screen monitor is probably easier on the eyes than something that's darker um, because of that checkerboard kind of phenomenon. Um, the other thing about actual, like, you know, the color of lights, they have the warm light and the bright light. Uh, I think that's personal preference, to be honest with you. I mean, even in my family, I love all the lights on around me as possible. I think the more lights, the better. Meanwhile, I'll be sitting in the kitchen doing work and my husband comes in and he turns all the lights off. <laughs> I'm like, I'm sitting here and I'm working. I like light. Um, so again, I think it's up to you. I think a, a well-lit environment makes less strain on your eyes when you're looking at things. But more importantly, it's the, the blue lights from the computer screens or the phone screens or the video game screens that really kind of create that eye fatigue. So I think... Um, I'm sure at this point they probably sell even a film for over your monitor, but even just getting a pair of those blue light blocking glasses, I feel like is very helpful. And then again, being aware of where your windows are, like a window on the side of you is okay, but a window right behind you, I'm um, sorry, right in front of your monitor can create a lot of sun glare right at your face. Mm -hmm. Awesome, thanks. Welcome. Any, I don't see any other, um... Uh, questions in the box, but lots of thank you. So we are going to wrap up soon. Um, uh, Kathy, if you want to take, oh, it's going to, that's perfect timing. Thanks. I'll give it back to you, Maria. <laughs> All right. No problem. Um, so it, we still have time. If you have any last minute questions, don't hesitate to um, let us know. I'm just going to move this along here. So um, first of all, thanks, Kathy. That was a lot of really good information and I'm, I can already tell I'm not doing what I'm supposed to do. <laughs> And I'm way right. too much time glued to the screen and getting mad at myself for doing that. So now I understand why <laughs> that's a problem. Um, as mentioned earlier, uh, you will all receive the recorded webinar today following the program in an email from SCORE. And SCORE is here to help you uh, with your next steps on your business plans and challenges. Uh, please reach out to your SCORE mentor for support. If you're, uh, you're not alone in the process of uh, developing and growing your business. If you aren't already working with a SCORE mentor, you can request one by going to our website link shown here on this screen or by calling the phone number and speaking with Lillian Harvey, our office administrator, and she can help you. Um, this information will be included also in our follow-up today. So you'll have it. Um, so uh, what I was gonna do now is actually bring up just one more poll uh, and this is to get some of your feedback on um, today's session so that we can continue to improve our programs and, um, uh, and make sure that we're meeting the needs of uh, folks like yourself, our clients and our communities. So if you would all take a minute to just go ahead and plug in your thoughts um, and then we'll pull this down and we'll be wrapping up in just a few minutes.
Can everyone see this on their screen? Yeah, yeah, okay, cool. Okay. Um, in the meantime, uh, I think uh, I can advance this other screen while we're working on this. Um, this is just some information about where we're located. We are, uh, all of our services these days are virtual, all our mentoring, all of our education. Um, but this is the contact information, the email, the uh, phone number. If you have any questions at all, don't hesitate to call SCORE because we're here to help you. Okay. Uh, looks like I think we're pretty much finished. I see one other question here in the box, Kathy. Um, I'd also be interested in optimal layouts of your desk if you if you would like to offer that. So like kind of guess positioning. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so if you have your desk in front of you, they call it your immediate workspace where um, you know, you're not reaching. So this, you know, me to my keyboard is not reaching, me to my mouse is not reaching. Um, but the idea is you want to have the things that you use most frequently right in that immediate workspace. So for me, that's going to be my cup of water. It's going to be my mouse. It's going to be probably my notebook and my pen. Um, so if you wanted to tell me specifically, you know, what items you use, I, I can give you specific advice on that. Um, you know, that document holder, if you're, you're going from paper to computer a lot, you want everything in that immediate workspace so you're not doing that extended reaching repetitively over time. Um, your mouse and kind of in Ryan's picture, you know, your mouse should be right next to your keyboard, uh, right at the side so I can still maintain that 90 degree degrees of my elbow and then go right back to my keyboard and that 90 degrees of my elbow. Um, so you don't want your mouse. A lot of times people have it outstretched all the way to the side, which is going to put you in like a, a side bend and a head tilt, and you're kind of leaning on your elbow. Um, that's the worst position you could be in. It's going to create a lot of stress. Um, so anything specific you were, you were thinking of that you wanted me to answer? Um, I, th I think that was okay. Monica asked the question and her, her audio isn't uh, working today. She said that's really helpful. Thank you. And, and Monica, feel free to email me. And if you wanted, you can take a picture of your current desk setup and you can email it to me. And then I can give you feedback on that specifically. Mm -hmm. That's a great idea. Yep. Absolutely. Feel free to connect with Kathy. Okay. I think we're good. Um, that was a really interesting program and um, it's a wrap for us today. So thanks for taking the time to join us uh, at SCORE with Kathy and I hope you all have a great day. Okay. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.